Hi, I'm John Peters, and in this video, I'm going to make a shadow box frame. Now, a shadow box frame is a lot like a float frame, at least in my mind, but with a wider reveal. And a reveal is the space between the edge of the painting and the edge of the frame. So, um, a friend of mine was up in Provincetown this summer, and when he was up there, he bought this really nice painting by the artist Stuart Shills. So when he called me and asked me to frame it, I was pretty excited because I really uh, like Stuart's work and I was looking forward to seeing the painting in person. So he stopped by the studio to look at a few wood samples and we decided to frame the painting in American white ash with a natural finish and to paint the inside of the frame. So in this video, we'll build the frame, but we're going to focus a little bit more on the finish because there's a few uh, good tricks, I think, on how to get a nice clean line between the painted surface on the inside of the frame and the natural finish on the outside of the frame. So let's go downstairs into the wood shop and get started. I've already milled my material for the outside of the frame, so the first thing I want to do is put a miter on one edge. The painting measures 14 by 16 and I want a three quarter inch reveal around the whole painting. So I'm going to add an inch and a half to the inside measurement of my frame. So the inside of the frame, I'm going to make 15 and a half by 17 and a half. Now I'm going to take the end of the tape measure and put it right to the inside of my first miter cut, measure out 17 and a half inches and mark a line. This mark represents the inside of my next miter cut. With my four sides cut to length, I'm ready to assemble the outside of the frame. And I'm using a little wood glue and 5 8 inch long nails in my brad gun. With the outside of the frame assembled, I'm ready to build the inside of the frame. And I'm using a piece of poplar that I've cut on the table saw. And this piece of molding here is what holds the painting in place. So to make sure that I'm at the right depth with this piece of molding, I've cut a piece of scrap wood that's just a little bit deeper than what the painting is. And if I hold the piece of scrap wood flush with the top of the frame, I know that when I attach my piece of poplar here, it will be at the right depth. Well, the frame is made and now I'm going to paint the inside of the frame. And what I'm going to do is tape out the top so I don't have to worry about getting any paint on it. The kind of tape that I'm using is called frog tape and it's a medium tack tape. Now I'm making sure that I don't go over. I'm just leaving a fine line here that when, if there's any paint there, I'll sand it off afterwards. With the frame taped out, I can prime the frame. And what I'm using for my primer is Benjamin Moore's Acrylic Fresh Start. Well, the acrylic primer is dry, and an acrylic primer will raise the grain of the wood and give it a rough feel, and that needs to be sanded. And I like to use a piece of 220 grit sandpaper to do that. So I'll give the frame a quick sanding, and then it'll be ready for a finish coat. Well, now I'm ready for my final color, and I'm going to paint the inside with Benjamin Moore's Dove White. And I'm using a flat wall paint because eventually 
I'm going to clear coat the inside of the frame and the outside with a thin coat of lacquer. Now the reason why I'm using a Dove White is it's just a little bit warmer than say uh, a white white or a, a super white and um, I just like the way it looks and I always tend to gravitate towards it so but you, you know you can use any kind of white you like uh, this just happens to be what I like. I'm going to paint two coats of paint on the inside of the frame and I don't want to wash out my brush uh, in between each coat so what I've been doing lately is using uh, this is a saran wrap that's meant for packing but I found that it works really good to wrap around a brush just about one and two times and then fold over the front of the bristles and that will keep the brush from drying out in between coats and when I finish painting my final coat then I'll wash out the brush. I've let the paint dry and before I remove any of the green tape I'm going to spray it with a thin coat of lacquer. Well now the lacquer's dry and just a quick review I have a coat of primer, two coats of finish and then a thin coat of lacquer. And What I'm going to do now is remove the tape With the tape removed, there's still a fine line of paint right at the edge of the frame and I'll remove that with 220 sandpaper on my orbital sander. When I sand, I'm going to be very careful to keep the sander level with the top of the frame and not dip the sander into the frame or out. I just want to keep a nice square edge and that will remove that thin line of paint that's on the very top edge of the frame. Well I finished sanding the frame and now I have a nice clean line between my natural wood edge and my painted finish. And I wanted to add, the reason why I put a thin coat of lacquer over the paint before I remove the tape is so the paint had a gloss surface and I didn't have to then worry about the sawdust marking up the paint in any kind of a way. Now I can blow the sawdust off of here and it will come off nice and easily and then I'll be ready to spray the frame with lacquer. And also I want to add, I always wear a dust mask. Uh, wood dust is really not good for you and it's just a good idea to always protect your lungs. With the sawdust removed from the frame, I'm ready to finish the frame with a few thin coats of lacquer. And again I'm going to wear my mask. I've let the lacquer dry for a few hours and now the only thing left to do is to attach the painting to the frame and to do that I'm going to use one inch long drywall screws. To attach the painting to the frame I like to put a piece of glycine over the painting and then a piece of cardboard because I have to keep a little downward pressure with my hand and I don't want to touch the surface of the painting when I screw through the bottom of the frame into the stretcher of the canvas. I've hung the edge of the frame over my work table so I can get to the pre-drilled hole with my screw gun. I've attached the painting to the frame with six screws from behind. I've wired it and I'll give my friend a call and let him know he can stop by and pick it up. I think he's going to be real happy with the choices we made. I know that I really like the white inside and the way it works with the natural white ash on the outside of the frame. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.